Hey, it's Corbin Harrison coming at you from the uh, home office here at the Harrison Home. Welcome to it. We keep writer's notebooks in this house. Hope you do too. Um, today we're going to talk about two challenges if you feel that you're a student likes challenges. One called heteronym comics and one called paranym comics. Uh, ones that I use in my notebook. I hope you like them enough to try them, but then you invent your own ideas for comics. That's kind of my idea behind this video today. Hey, I just want to share a trick I do in my writer's notebook. Um, I like to uh, reserve pages. What you're seeing here is you're seeing that I've moved about 10 pages in my current writer's notebook. And uh, while I was walking down a hallway the other day at a doctor's office, sorry, trying to light this up, I saw a sign that said locked and unlocked on the same door. And because I'm studying oxymorons and because I had my camera phone, I took a picture of it and I put that oxymoron on the top of a page. I'll write about it, I suppose, when I come to that page. I also got a camera phone picture in there. Uh, we have a whole lesson at the website now on how to make your camera phones exist in little templates like that. Reserving a page, it's not a terrible idea. Um, it allows you to, when you're writing a lot, sometimes you come across something that you set up for yourself that's nice, like a little comic for yourself. Here's a page I've reserved ahead that's got a comic on it. Um, I don't have to write about the comic when I get to that page. I can write in all this beautiful white space around the comic, but the idea is that the comic kind of gives it a visual, and the thing about my comics is they're not just art, they're clever in words, that's where they always start. And so today's lesson is how do you create clever words and make heteronym and paranym comics. Welcome, let's go through this quickly. I think you probably are pretty smart learners. The uh, first thing I need to define for you is the word heteronym. Heteronym comes from two words different and name, and in this case actually name pronunciation, because that's what a heteronym is. Two or more words spelled exactly the same, but they have different pronunciations. Examples would be like bass the fish, or bass the guitar. Examples would be like close, as in uh, nearby, and close the verb, as in shut down. And here's what it's going to throw you. You want to say sewer, but that first one is sower, because it says seamstress, and that second one is sewer. It's where your toilets drain. Those are heteronyms of each other. Project and project, or project and project. Which order do you put them in? They're fun words to kind of, they're like tongue twisters, but they're on the word level. They mess with your brain. Those are heteronyms. Then there are paronyms. Paronyms comes from, come from two uh, Greek roots as well, beside, para, um, and then onym as a name again. Uh, two or more words that are related to each other by sharing a common root from a language they both came from. If two words sh share a Latin root, for example, you can say they're paronyms of each other. If you can put those two words in a sentence together, you've created a sentence with a paronym. With A paronym sentence is what we call them. So some examples might be, start with an easy one, like pre. Pre is a very common prefix, meaning before. And so prefix, premier, predate, premonition, all are words that have something to do with meaning before. If you could put three or four of those in one sentence and then provide an illustration for that sentence, my friends, you've just created a paronym comic. That's the idea here. Go with a little harder one, like med, medical, medicinal, remedy, paramedic. Now notice I didn't put medium in there. Um, medium is M-E-D-I as a root, totally different root, and I think that's an important thing that you can learn while you're studying paronyms. But put three or four of those words together in a sentence. Can you make a sentence that's worth illustrating as a comic? Claire, uh, and again here, I didn't put clairvoyant because it's C-L-A-I-R, which also does mean clear, which C-L-A-R means, but because it wasn't exactly the same, I felt it was noble to put roots that were all exactly the same. So I got clarinet, clarify, declaration, and clarion. And finally, because I wanted to show you, this could be really hard and challenging, I looked at the word dilute, and I found that loot means like to cleanse with water especially. And so I found all of these words um, that mean to cleanse. Um, and uh, they, uh, some of them are pretty hard words. And so sometimes you can make a paronym comic that's based on words you know. Sometimes you can make it on words that you're trying to learn impressive. So, paronym comics. The idea of a good comic in your writer's notebook, I'll say once more, should be that it's language-based. Now, here's the process I go through to create a heteronym paronym comic. First of all, I get these bouts of time in my day. I call them sacred writing time, and that's when I get 10, 10, 12 minutes just to sit in my notebook and write. Step one during that time, I write several clever heteronym sentences. So, here's the first one I came up with. It's hard to 
to close a friendship with someone you're close to. Number two I wrote, when he wrecked his moped, he moped all day. I've always liked that as a heteronym, so I thought I'd try the sentence. I thought I should resign, but I needed to re-sign my contract to pay the bills. Those just barely sound different from each other, but they're good heteronyms. See, I wrote seven. Here's number four. Bat Boy, who has become a regular character in my writer's notebook. Bat Boy's conduct has been questionable because he doesn't know how to conduct himself in public. Number five. Donald wanted his divining rod to lead him to lead, not water. I've always liked those two. Six, the teacher was quite content his students had learned the necessary content from the curriculum. I like that one, but I'm not sure how interesting the illustration I could provide if I was making a comic. I wound the bandage around my unfortunate wound. That would be my final example of a heteronym sentence. So let's say you've got a bunch of these. You say to yourself, well, if I illustrate one, I've created a comic. Now, in my classroom, you have to illustrate not during the 10 minutes of sacred writing time. You illustrate later. You can prepare space for it, but you illustrate it later on. Uh, and so here's step two. Once you've created one, you design a comic strip or save space for a comic strip. Can I save space for this one? When I had a free couple of minutes, I added the picture, but dumb Donald thought his divining rod might lead him to a deposit of lead, not water. I improved it a little from its first form, gave it a little caption, um, but that's a heteronym comic. Now me, I always make them one panel. There's no reason they can't be a two panel comic or a three panel comic. Um, I try to keep them as simple as possible and that's why I also use Mr. Stick. Uh, I don't believe that people should out art each other um, with their skills. I think Mr. Stick is a very valid use in your writer's notebook. So uh, that was heteronym comics. Now let me show you how I set up for them. Here's actually a page I set up in my writer's notebook. Um, where I left myself space to create four heteronym comics. And I said, when I created this page, I said, in the next month or two, I'm going to add four heteronym comics. And over time, these were each created on different days. Um, I started creating them, and clearly you can see I have space for one more. This is what I mean by reserving a page in your writer's notebook. Here I did it ahead of time, and I'm way past this page now, but when I finally come up with that perfect final heteronym, it's going to go right in that white space that's there for it. But that's creating heteronyms. Let's try the even harder one, I think, paronyms. Harder because you can choose to make them hard. Here's paronym comics. So first of all, during sacred writing time, I write interesting sentences that use multiple paronyms. Here are five that I wrote in 10 minutes. I got to admit, these were a little harder to write because you have to think of many roots and you have to have some good knowledge of Greek and knowledge roots, uh, Greek and Latin roots to do this, or actually roots from many languages. But to get a lot of them, Greek and Latin might be the best place to start. I came up with the paramedic's medical training helped him discover a medicinal remedy growing near the rose bush. I asked myself, would that be, would I be able to provide some sort of graphic visual to go with that if it was computer based, if it was hand drawn? If I could do that, I have the ability to make a paronym comic. Now notice that sentence is a thoughtful sentence because look, it's got all of those words that are all paronyms of each other. That's what I mean by you can create comics as long as just as much if not more thought goes into the words as in the picture. Here's my second one. His omniscience came in handy that day on the omnibus when he needed to locate an omnivore. I don't know why that one struck me as so funny when I wrote it, but it did. Uh, the thinnest contralto, I always liked that word, uh, one of the singing, uh, not quite an alto, but a contralto. The thinnest contralto was the one who contradicted his knowledge about the contraband. I thought that would be a fun one to illustrate. Only through reform can we make him conform to wear our uniform. Now and there you'll notice the related roots all come at the end. Sometimes they come at the beginning, sometimes they come at the middle, sometimes they come at the end. Uh, they uh, can surprise you where roots pop up sometimes. And here's my fifth one. We took a panoramic photo of the Pantheon and pandemonium ensued when a performing pantomime photo bombed us. Now I really like that sentence, but I could not see myself illustrating it, so I did not choose that. Step one write sentences. That's what sacred writing time is for. Whenever you get a chance, write some paronyms. Here are 
here's my first paranym that I turned into a comic. The thinnest contralto was the one who contradicted his knowledge about the contraband. Again, one comic, one pa panel comic. Here I have some dialogue. I added some music to show that he was the contralto, but that's as fancy as it needs to get. And again, when I first came up with this idea of paranym comics, I set up a page for them, four places, and you can see three that have been acted out. I am currently looking for the perfect fourth paranym comic to go in that blank space on my page. You set up a page like that, I can't wait to see what sort of paranym sentences you create. But uh, I want to remind you at uh, our website, uh, the Always Right website, which is CorbettHarrison.com, um, you can find the w uh, actual lesson where all of these examples are there, plus others. Uh, if you, in Google, just type Corbett Harrison and the words homophone comics or homograph comics or language comics, you should end up right at the link that's going to take you here. Come join us anytime. Our job at our, no our, at our website is to try to inspire writers to uh, like what they're writing. And you know what? The Writer's Notebook is such a great place to do that. Give them their voices back. Let them claim who they are personality-wise before you start giving them all of those formulated writing tests we have to do. Give them some time to be themselves. That's what a Writer's Notebook is for. Have a great day, everyone. Keep coming back. Bye. Bye.